Okay, thanks again for logging in uh, to our um, business law class today. Um, I'm just going to go briefly over chapter 18, employment law. And after I have lectured, we can uh, you can ask any questions you may have. So uh, one of the things you might have heard, a lot of you probably have already had job one or two or even more jobs is employment at will. So employment at will means really, there is really no um, uh, contract for a specific time duration, duration for your employment when you work somewhere. Um, and what it means is an employer can terminate an employee anytime for any reason. Uh, except, of course, they cannot terminate you for illegal reasons um, uh, or for no reason without incurring any liability. And we will go over some of the things um, that would be illegal as an employer to terminate somebody, right? But um, if there's no illegal reason of them terminating you, they can let you go anytime. They don't even have to give you a reason, honestly, right? Uh, this also means you are free to leave anytime you want, right? You can uh, go to work one day and not show up the next. Um, however, um, I would not recommend that um, because, um, you know, you, you, you kind of want to keep a good reputation and, and a good relationship with your former employers, right? They might, you might use them as uh, for reference one day, or there might be somebody working there that you'll be working with in the future at another company. Um, so out of courtesy, people usually give about a two week notice, sometimes even longer, depending on the na nature of the job, right? Um, unless you can't take it and it's an unbearable place to work at, uh, I would recommend to always give at least a two week notice. Right? Um, some of the things covered by employment law are wages, hours, layoff and leave. Um, uh, you will read in the textbook about child labor. There are specific rules in this country, how um, uh, old you have to be before you can start working for somebody else. Outside your family, there are special rules when you have a family business, but in general, I think um, the age is 15 or 15 and a half if you're working underage and you would have to have uh, permission by your parents or, or by your legal guardian. And a lot of times um, they will also request uh, um, uh, something from the school. Um, and the hours you can work are very restricted when you're underage. So um, they're very restricted during school hour. School, when school is in session, you, you, you can work less hours, right? And, and during the summer, you could uh, technically work um, uh, more hours, eight hour days and so forth, right? Um, minimum wage requirements are, are controlled by employment law. Um, there is a minimum wage um, set federally, meaning um, the entire country has to follow that law or all employers in the country have to follow that law. I think it's somewhere around $7.50 or $8 an hour that you have to get paid um, um, anywhere in the country, right? Um, then you have state minimum wage. So each state can set their minimum wage, but it has to be higher than the minimum, than the federal minimum wage. The state can say, well, the federal is $8, but we're only going to pay 5 But they can say, in this state, you have to pay at least $10 an hour, right? Um, I haven't looked up the California minimum wage recently, but I know it's probably somewhere around $11 or $12 an hour. So any employer in California employing people, and if they pay uh, um, hourly wages, they cannot pay below that. Then you can also have county and city minimum wages. If you look here at, in Silicon Valley, you have a, a varying minimum wage. For example, San Jose is, I think, $16.50 an hour. Los Gatos is only $13.50 an hour. I think San Francisco is probably around $16 an hour. I don't know what it is in San Mateo right now, but, but you know, cities can set their own minimum wage requirements as well, right? Um, and then there are rules that, that cover overtime, right? Um, uh, usually when you work more than 40 hours a week, you are entitled to overtime pay. Mm -hmm. Any hour that you worked beyond 40 hours a week, uh, you get paid time and a half. So if your hourly wage is, if your regular hourly wage is $20 an hour, um, uh, if you worked 40 hours at that wage, the 41st hour you would get paid $30 an hour, time and a half, right? Now there are exemptions for overtime pay. If you are a salaried employee, not an hourly employee, you don't get paid overtime. 
So a lot of management positions um, are salary jobs or professionals uh, um, uh, work for salaries, right? Um, so they also don't get ducked if they work less than 40 hours, right? They, they basically get um, uh, a set amount um, every month, every, every paycheck is the same, right? Uh, another thing that's covered under employment law is, is layoffs. There are specific rules employers have to follow when they do layoffs. And, and um, a layoff is not considered a layoff until a, a company uh, lays off a certain number of people, right? Um, um, so if they just lay off one, one person, they don't have to follow these laws, but it has to be a certain percentage. I believe it's 30% within a certain geographic location that would have to be laid off, right? Then they have to follow layoff laws. One of them would be they have to let the employees know 60 days in advance that they will be laid off. So um, what companies usually do is rather than telling employees, uh, in two months, you're going to be laid off. You won't have a job here in two months. They, they send them home the day they, they notify them of the layoff and they have to pay them for 60 more days, right? Um, uh, so that's one of the major rules. They, they have to follow certain requirements, the order, how they lay off people and so forth. They have to be careful with um, uh, um, employees that have seniority and that might be, um, you know, higher Eight or uh, older employees, so they have to follow a lot of specific rules. Some of them are covered in a textbook, but of course, there are a lot more rules that they have to follow. Um, and that's again, if it's a major layoff, such as 30% uh, of your entire workforce in or of your workforce in a given geographic area. Another um, uh, topic that comes up in this chapter is the Family and Medical Leave Act. So a um, a company has to um, uh, give an employee, now this would be unpaid time off with Family Medical Leave Act, and these are the five um, um, uh, occasions when they have to do that, uh, to care for a newborn within one year of the baby's birth, right? So, and they, it has to be up to three months, right? So if you or your spouse has a baby, um, you can take... Um, uh, the three months and your spouse can take the three months. A lot of times what couples do is, you know, uh, the mother sometimes takes the first three months off and then the father takes the second three months off. This is not just for the mother. This is for both parents. So that way they would have the first six months covered already. Uh, when they do, when they are on leave, uh, their benefits continue and their position has to be there um, when they return or a comparable position has to be there with the same level and the same pay, right? Um, the other reason they can do that is also to care for an adopted or a foster child within one year the child is placed into the family or to care for an employee spouse, child or parent who has a serious health condition or if the employee him or herself suffers of a serious health condition and is not able to perform the essential job functions or even for non-medical emergencies arising uh, out of the fact that the spouse, um, the spouse, son or daughter is covered under active duty in the military. So let's say you, you are going to be transferred somewhere or you have to have a temporary relocation or something like that. Um, again, employees have to keep the position um, or keep a position for that employee when they return from their leave they might replace that position, but they have to create a similar one or new one that um, uh, the employee can continue when they return from their family leave. Um, health and safety and income security, um, uh, health and safety, there's OSHA, which is the Occupational Safety and Health Admin, uh, Act, or there's an administration for this actually. Uh, they, they keep records of, of uh, companies' violations, uh, um, uh, they, they give notices to companies that aren't following safety standards. Uh, they take complaints from employees um, about employers that, that might violate some, some healthy health standards and safety standards, and they will go and inspect the facilities um, and um, uh, tell employers, you, you have to fix this. Um, um, so um, this is taken very seriously because uh, employers have the legal obligation to provide their employees a safe workplace. 
This is uh, including equipment that employees are using. This could be the, the, the um, uh, hazardous materials employees could be working with. Um, the, the physical environment has to be safe. Um, uh, um, so um, if you feel that there's not safe at your place of employment, uh, you can report that to OSHA and they will uh, very likely do an inspection and, and see if that can be corrected. Employment discrimination, of course, is a big topic when it comes to employment law. Uh, um, and it's uh, in, in regards mostly in regards to Title VII of the Civil Rights Acts, where, where employees must have equal employment opportunity, um, uh, regardless of um, uh, their uh, background or religion or gender or, or, or marital status and all those things that are covered under this, uh, on the, under the Civil Rights Act, under T Title VII, right, that we covered in previous chapters. Um, there is an EEOC commission, equal, I mean, the EEOC is an Equal Employment Opportunity Commission that you can um, bring up complaints to when you have, feel you have been discriminated against. Um, there are two different uh, types of, well, there are a lot of different types of discrimination, but they're classified under intentional or unintentional discrimination. So under intentional discrimination, the, the, the plaintiff or the person that feels that they have been discriminated against and that are bringing, that is bringing up a lawsuit has to be a member of a protected class. So it has to be one of those um, covered under Title VII. Um, uh, virtually every person can be a member of a protected class because race is part of that, right? Gender can be part of that. When we talk about gender discrimination, we're not only talking about females. Males can also be discriminated against, right? Because of gender, right? Same with race. Any race can, can feel that they have been discriminated against. So, um, But that has to be the reason, right? So if it's for a job application, for example, um, the, the, um, the plaintiff would have had to apply for the job and would have had to be qualified for the job and then would have had to be denied for the job. And after that, the employers continued seeking applicants and filled the position with somebody from a different class uh, for, uh, that is not in that specific protected class, right? So let's say you are a female employee and you apply for a job, you qualify for the job, you don't get the job, uh, and the um, employer continues uh, looking for um, um, applicants and hire somebody or hire somebody that is not a female. Um, so you could bring on a lawsuit, but um, um, you know whether you win or not depends on a lot of the other details, right? But this is also not just for job applications, but also would be things like job promotions, transfers, and things like that, right? Pay, there's a lot of pay discrimination, unfortunately, right? Um, so, and then there is unintentional discrimination. Sometimes employers advertise jobs in certain areas that does not get a very diverse pool of applicants. And because of that, they might just have a, you know, white males or white and Indian males offering, uh, applying for a, a, a job in um, uh, software development or something like that, because they only advertise somewhere where only white and Indian males see it or something like that, right? Um, uh, and then the rate of hiring, when they're firing really has the, fast, they might just, you know, accidentally overlook other applicants or, or uh, not advertise to, to other applicants, right? So uh, good companies are making conscious efforts to advertise their job opportunities to diverse communities. It's very important that employers do that because if they don't, they could commit unintentional discrimination, right? Um, when we talk about discrimination based on race, color, and national origin, um, um, that is very broad, but there is a case in the textbook, uh, Jianmin Chang versus Alabama Agricultural and Mechanical University. Um, this person was a, a professor at the university, and professors usually get annual contracts, right? And the contract was not renewed, um, and the person uh, went um, and opened a lawsuit saying my contract was not renewed because of my national origin. However, the courts um, uh, agreed with the university because the university um, kept records about the performance of this um, uh, employ employee and could prove that they 
that they did not use his national origin as a reason to let, let him go, but it was rather job performance. But this is very important um, uh, because this shows that when companies keep records of uh, employment, uh, employees' performance, um, uh, they might uh, they can prove that was the reason why they were let go. Sometimes companies might not keep good records. They would have to prove it, right? Um, and then there is a topic that comes up briefly in the textbook called reverse discrimination. Um, uh, this is when, um, let's say, white males feel they have been discriminated against because um, other um, uh, races or genders have been um, uh, have received preferential treatment because of their race or gender or whatever it might be right uh, so um, uh, while everything is difficult to prove um, uh, that that can also be a successful loss discrimination based on religion so uh, one of the things employers have to do is they have to provide reasonable accom accommodations for employees <laughs> continue practicing their religion right so there are two cases in the textbook that are that with two <clears throat> out outcomes that are very interesting and um, one of them is Abercrombie and Fitch um, stores uh, many of you might be familiar you you see those stores usually and and in our local malls, Hollister's, by the way, one of the, uh, their stores as well, right? So um, there was a female employee who was Muslim and she was wearing a head covering, a hijab it's called. And um, the, the store manager didn't really know whether they should hire this person or not, uh, if it violated um, uh, company policy, because I think their company policy was they could not wear a baseball cap or head coverings, right, while at work and, and serving customers. Um, so they asked the, the, the uh, district office or, or the, the headquarters, I don't remember, they, they asked and, and they told them, do not hire this person uh, because that violates our um, company policy. We don't want anybody with a hijab working in our stores. Uh, well, the applicant uh, uh, brought on a lawsuit and the courts agreed with the applicant saying this is religious uh, discrimination based on religion. Uh, the company has to make reasonable accommodations and allow her to wear her head cover, wear her head covering um, uh, during work hours. Uh, um, if it does not interfere with the basic duties, the employer has to allow that. Abercrombie had a lot of other cases against them, similar ones where they said, well, you know, our employees are not really retail clerks, they're models, so they have to look a certain way and dress a certain way, uh, but they could not get away for, with it because they look at their regular job duties and really they're just retail clerks or retail sales associates, right? So um, they have to make accommodations. Since then, I have visited stores and I have seen occasionally women with head coverings, right? The other um, um, example um, that um, is in the textbook where somebody tried to sue a company, in this case, AT&T, based on religious discrimination was when somebody worked for AT&T for several years and then the, the Rodriguez, the Sanchez Rodriguez, and then he changed his religion and his new religion required him to, um, I don't know, go to church on Saturdays. So he could not uh, work Saturdays anymore because of his religion. And, and, and AT&T tried to tell him, well, you know, you, you can try to see if you can switch shift with other people uh, and see if you can get Saturdays off based on that. But we can't give you Saturdays off that. Um, um, and um, I think this went all the way to the Supreme Court. Court, if I'm not mistaken, and but the courts decided that no, at and does not have to make this accommodation because Saturday is their busiest day, and they hired people based on the fact that they could work Saturdays. And if people start not working Saturdays, and if they can't work Saturdays, that would put an undue hardship on at and So they did not have to provide accommodations and did not have to give this person Saturdays off. So as you can see, um, uh, two cases that um, were employees sued based on, on dis, uh, discrimination based on religion and, and the outcome 
was different. So um, the answer with legal cases is always, it depends. It always depends on the circumstances. And then there can be discrimination based on gender, just like with race and religion. Uh, gender must be a determining factor. In other words, you, you, you did not hire or did not promote the person because of gender. Uh, pregnancy can be a discrimination. And there can also be a lot of wage discrimination. Unfortunately, when we look at the statistics, uh, um, um, females still make significantly less for the same type of position that males do. So if, if a, um, a female employee can prove that she is making less than a male em employee who uh, has the same experience, same uh, um, uh, background, same degrees or whatsoever, um, that, can be, that can definitely be a successful lawsuit. Um, the next topic is sexual harassment um, that is taken seriously in courts. That uh, sexual harassment means the demanding of sexual favors in returns for job promotions or bef benefits. Um, that sexual harassment is called quid pro quo harassment. In other words, you do me a sexual favor and I'll promote you or I'll give you a raise. Or if you don't do it, I'll fire you, right? It's like they want something for something. Or the other type of sexual harassment is when there's language or conduct that is so of offensive that, it's a creative, uh, that it creates a hostile work environment. Okay. That's sexual har harassment based on hostile work environment where employees feel uncomfortable because of the language that's used, because of the people, the way people behave or because of the, the, the things um, customers might get away with or because of pictures that are hanging on the walls, whatever it might be that makes employees feel uncomfortable, right? And, and companies have to have a way for employees to report this and not be reprimanded for reporting it, right? Sometimes that's a problem um, uh, because the supervisor is the one harassing, so they can't really report it to the supervisor. So they really have to have a neutral way where employees can report it, such as maybe a you know, human resources department if there is a human resource, sometimes small companies don't have that, right? So, but there has to be a way to report it. And, and the employer is responsible to immediately correct this and stop the harassment or stop the harassing behavior or stop the harassing environment, right? Um, and um, so um, if, there, if they don't stop it, then the employee can uh, start a lawsuit saying the employer did not um, um, stop this behavior um, and, um, you know, I was, the harassment was continuing. So um, what's really important is that uh, from the employee's perspective is uh, don't take harassment, report it as soon as it occurs. Nobody needs to be uncomfortable at work, right? Um, uh, so the sooner you report it, the sooner you give the employer the chance to stop it. If it continues, make sure you record, you document everything with the dates and times and what happened and, and, and the details. So if it doesn't stop and you, you, you can uh, go the legal route and, and start a lawsuit. What's important for employers is that they, of course, provide a harassment free environment for their employees. But of course, they don't have a 100% control of what other employees might do, right? But that again, that they have a way for employees to report any harassment and that they immediately stop it, right? Because that will prevent a lawsuit. So if you were harassed at, at your place of employment and you bring it up to your employer and they stop it immediately, you have no reason to, to bring on the lawsuit. And if you do, you probably won't be successful. But if you... Uh, do report something and the employer does nothing about it and you continue being harassed or maybe they even reprimand you, then you have a reason to bring on a lawsuit and probably successful. Um, retaliation by employers um, uh, is, uh, can be, um, is, is illegal, right? Uh, based on employment laws. If a, a, an employee um, uh, brings on a lawsuit, um, they, they cannot re retaliate. Uh, harassment by coworkers is also an issue. It doesn't always have to be a supervisor or sometimes by non-employees, by maybe uh, customers or by other suppliers, anybody that doesn't work for the company, right? That has to be stopped too, right? Uh, there's of course, same gender harassment, 
right? Harassment doesn't have to be always male to female or female to male. It could be same gender as well, right? And then sometimes there's sexual orientation harassment. If somebody has a different sexual ori orientation, they could be harassed. Um, and, and um, uh, you know, that is, again, taken seriously by courts. That should not happen at work. And, of course, there can be online harassment, just like in person. And we all have been working online for a lot of us have been working online for the last year and a half almost. Right. So um, uh, that doesn't mean harassment has stopped. Unfortunately, it can continue online. Right. Um, remedies until Title VII. Uh, the employer's liability might be extensive. They might have to re rehire that person, whether that person left voluntarily because they couldn't stand the harassment anymore, or whether they were fired because of retaliation, right? They would have, they could have to reinstate that employee mm -hmm. and give back pay all of the, mon uh, the, the money the employee could have made had they stayed on. Uh, if there were any promotions they were denied, they might have to give retroactive promotions, and then any other damages the employee might have incurred because of the harassment. Maybe they had uh, some um, uh, mental health problems due to it and, and things like that, right? So that there, there's a lot of liability that the employer can uh, be held responsible for. And another topic is discrimination based on age. Um, uh, so um, the member of uh, when you feel that you have been discriminated based on age, you have to be part of the protected class based on age. And that protected class is only for people over 40 years or 40 years and over actually, right? If you feel you are discriminated because you were young, you have no legal recourse, right? People can deny you a promotion because you're young. They can pay you less because you're you're, you're younger and inexperienced or whatever. Uh, um, but um, if you're, you're 40 or older, you might have a lot lawsuit, right? But um, just like with any discrimination, um, uh, you know, the, the, the points that we had earlier, you have to be qualified for the position, the employer has, uh, you have to apply for the position, be qualified for the position, the, the employer did not hire you uh, and hired somebody younger than you, right, you might have a lawsuit right there. Um, another issue with age discrimination is, is sometimes you maybe uh, uh, companies might um, uh, be tempted to lay off people um, because they're older, um, because maybe they're worried about their uh, performance or health, or, or maybe they're just because they're making more money. You know, the, the older you are, the, the higher your wages usually. So they could have a lawsuit um, on their hands if they do that, right? Um, and then discrimination based on uh, disability is, uh, we have the Americans with Disability Act and it's protected. So if the plaintiff has, uh, the, you know, the procedures under that is the plaintiff would have to have a disability, uh, the plaintiff is otherwise qualified for the employment in question. So they can perform the job, even though they have a disability. And the and plaintiff was excluded for the employment just because of the disability, right? So um, what is a disability? A disability is not always obvious, right? But it's physical or mental impairment that substantially limits one or more of an individual's ma ma major life activity. It could be vision, it could be physical walking, it could be hearing. Um, uh, you have to have a record of the visibility. I mean, I'm sorry, of the impairment. Um, uh, you can't just say, oh, well, I have a disability, but you know, you have to have medical records for it, right? Um, if you don't, you, you can't claim a case under um, 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 the American with Disabilities Act. When companies hire employees, uh, they might also have to make reasonable accommodations so a person with a disability can perform the essential job functions. Uh, for example, they might have to uh, widen the, the walkways because somebody is in a wheelchair, right? So they can perform the job, right? Um, and they have to be reasonable accommodations. If the employer cannot do it, then of course, they, 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 there's no way the employee could um, um, uh, perform the job functions. Uh, so one of the defenses um, for employment discrimination is business necessity, a, a defense to an allegation of an employment discrimination in which the employer shows that an employment practice that discriminates against a member of a protected class is related to job performance. So it's really because of the job performance, right? 
The other one is bona fide occupational qualifications, the BFOQ. It's an identifiable characteristic reasonably necessary to a normal operation of a particular uh, job or business, right? Those could be gender, national origin, religion, but not race, but they could be disability, right? Imagine if you want to be a flight attendant, but you are in a wheelchair, you could not perform the job, right? Or if you are hiring an actor or actress based on gender, you want somebody to play a mom, you, you need to hire a woman, right? Or, or somebody maybe who changed identity to a woman, but still, right? Um, so that would be a BFOQ, right? Um, and then sometimes it's seniority system, right? Um, uh, you know, especially if you have a, a shop where that uh, where you have a union, uh, people who um, work somewhere longer have seniority over other people. So sometimes they get to choose their schedule. Sometimes they're the because they were the first ones hired, they're the last ones to be laid off. And, and, and they could be maybe the white male, a white male got hired first and has seniority over, uh, um, uh, you know, the Hispanic female, but that's because of seniority. So that is a defense, right? Um, so that's it. Let me, I'm going to actually stop the recording and then I'm going to um, ask questions, one second. Okay.